Going on my fellow reef builders i have thoroughly enjoyed actually getting my hands wet on some reef tanks with you guys and been showing off kind of a very large tank and today we're doing a, a much much smaller tank so uh, you know there's been some talk in the reef aquarium hobby not just in the last few weeks or months but you know in decades that the the reef aquarium hobby in general is too expensive and i don't think that's necessarily true i just think people are building up most of their reef tanks like they're Teslas or Bugattis, and there's definitely a lot of C Corolla and uh, Ford Focus options out there, and that's exactly what we're gonna build today. So this entire aquascape is gonna be built around this one rock. Um, I don't even know what this is. This is two lumpy rocks that I got in a, in a used tankscape um, a long, long time ago. And this was a rock in my previous reef tank at home, and I brought everything over here, and this thing has been sitting over here for three years, you know, bouncing around from tank to tank to tank, but all it is is a field of purple deaths on one side, some uh, really nice red rhodactus, and this funky kind of white spotted green rhodactus next to it. Um, for sure, these corals are getting overlit. Um, you know, there's a high energy tank with a bunch of acros and soft corals and frags, and this particular instant reefscape is very much going to appreciate um, a small micro environment designed just for it. So let me show you what we're gonna be starting with. This is a 10 gallon curved glass tank. Um, it came from a JBJ slash Dennerlay uh, aquascapers kit. For the sake of this build, um, you should be able to pick up a 10 gallon tank anywhere, you know, either free or for like 10 about dollars. Now that we have a tank, that can hold water and a lid that can kind of keep down the evaporation. Let me show you some, some of the equipment that I've been building up. Um, so this is my carousel of, of assorted things. Um, I've got my window mangrove planted in fresh water. I moved it over here because he started getting tall. They want him to get knock over. And I've got a lot of new products that are just waiting in the queue to get um, tested out. And here we start seeing some of the uh, the Cche gear that I have for nano tanks. You know, small propeller pumps, internal filters. Uh, small filters. I'm going to save those for some of the medium sized nano reef tanks. Um, and then here's where it kind of gets a little bit uh, less mainstream. So here's um, some basic internal filters, just like, you know, three, five, six watts maximum. I think this one is the tiniest one. This is, we're going to save this for a real Pico reef tank because this has a max flow rate of 80 gallons per hour. Um, here we have an assortment of different LED lights. I know these are gonna be really fun, but this is the light I'm looking forward to use for this tank. This is the Lamini Bar 10. Um, it's got a nice heat sink and gooseneck, so we can do some stuff with that. So we're gonna put that in the stack, and then we're gonna grab one of these Nikru Magi Jet filters, put that in the stack, and then the last thing we really need is the Nikru Digital Mini Heater. So uh, let's go back over to the tank pop these open and uh, see what we are working with. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the heater because I feel like this is one of the bigger wild cards here. This is a 50 watt rated for five to 15 gallons. This was $14. I think it's gonna be a you know, pretty standard issue. And what do we have here? Ah, you know, just a nice little heating element. I believe it's got a digital display right here when you turn it on. I wonder if it opens up. Well, it's also got a, got a heater guard, so this will be fun. I think these styles were developed uh, for uh, like turtle tanks and stuff, so they're really solid. So this is probably a little bit more than this tank is gonna need, but we're gonna throw it in there because winter time is coming. So we got the heater. And then we got just a classic internal filter. It doesn't really matter how you run it, how you do it. Yeah, it's about a, as big as I expected. Just a 
single chamber here. I think I picked out this one because, ah, yes, this is why I liked this one. It has a chamber right here, which is removable. So you have like your mini media reactor chamber that's supposed to come out. Yeah, just a nice little cartridge. We'll be able to put some bio media in there or some chemical media. We got a sponge to start and then an assortment of spray bars if we want to kind of uh, diffuse the water flow because there's not going to be that much in this tank. And then here's going to be one of the, the funnest parts of this build is just a small little gooseneck LED light. So one thing you can tell though, it's not that cheap. It's got a substantial heat sink. I think it's 10 watts. It says bar 10. We're just going to go with 10 watts. Uh, we'll, we'll check it. But you see it's got uh, mostly blue LEDs and then a few whites. Um, some, Hopefully some of these blues are different colors. You can tell from the quality, you know, that chip wasn't placed properly. It actually looks to be upside down. But I think I turned it on once and it did work. That's actually the red, that's what it is. That's the red LED. So that's gonna be pretty fun. So we're just gonna start assembling everything. So we got this all done up here. I'm gonna place it right in the middle of the back so it can hide behind the rock. Um, all right, so that's that. The filter I can put back together. We have, I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna take out the carbon because obviously we don't need it yet. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's gonna kind of a plasticky case, but the power head is, uh, is substantial enough. Let's see, it's a seven watt little power head. Um, looks pretty beefy. You take a look at the impeller, make sure everything's all kosher. Yeah, you know, a tiny little three bladed impeller, not much to speak of there, but hopefully it doesn't give us any problems. It just has to work, right? So we're gonna put this on like that. And I think there, the spray bar is gonna, gonna be in order here, so. Okay, all right, now the funnest part is going to be the light, because I've never used this light before. Oh look, there's a remote control. I think this is for the heater. <laughs> That's funny. Um, the mount. So man, this, uh, this side mount is definitely suitable for very, very thick tanks, like up to an inch. Okay, I'm just gonna do that at an angle for now. Keep it nice and high. So it's a basic inline remote. I think you can cycle through like different colors and stuff and uh, maybe like two different colored channels. So on the reflection there, you can see, this is actually a pretty, what I call colorific. You know, we've got a couple shades of blue, red, green, and you know, an average white LED. Let me see how I cycle through. So we got a blue channel with the UVs, a white channel with some blue, and this is all on. And there is a built-in timer into this thing, but just to keep it easy, I am going to use a smart timer. So um, you would think that applying timers would be the most reliable piece of automation hardware possible, but in all my years of keeping aquariums, I've never had one last. I'm talking about 20, 25 years. Maybe some of the outdoor models that are like kind of heavy duty and cost like 25 or 30 bucks. Some, some of those will last, um, but these always burn out for me and they stick and I don't know. I, these are $5 and it gives me two things. It gives me a switch just to turn things on and off and it's programmable for $5. So that's going to be part of the build. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up with some old tank water. That's one of the small hacks to uh, setting up a tank in one day without any worries. And then we're going to plug in some of the equipment and uh, pop in that coral. So man, I gotta say, we're having a little bit of, uh, too much fun over here with some of this budget reef aquarium gear. This is, again, this is like brown label stuff off of Amazon, um, but they produce so much stuff. Some of it has to work, right? And as we've plugged in the three different things, you know, we're finding fun little tricks. Uh, the seven watt internal filter, 
start up just fine. I don't think it's the best idea to use the spray bar with two 90 degree elbows, basically just killing the pressure right out the gate. We're gonna start out with this setup just to see how it goes, but I don't think I'm gonna stick with that. Um, secondly, you know, once we got the water in, uh, this light is not anywhere near as bright as just the overheads that we have here, but I still think it's gonna do the job. You know, it's kind of like, almost impossible to underlight shrooms and zoanthids. So we're gonna work with it for a little while. It might need an upgrade down the road, but it's not gonna kill the animals by any measure. Uh, by far the biggest surprise was the heater. This thing was $14, 50 watts. It comes with a remote control and you can just through the tank, you can see the screen and um, it'll blink as you're basically setting the heater itself. And um, another thing that I've never seen before is there's an H basically to read how many hours the thing is run. And if you press H, it'll give you A0, B number, C number, D number, and it'll repeat. And it'll tell you the number of hours it has operated, right? So in the manual, it literally tells you to replace it after 10,000 hours. I looked it up, that's 416 days. Mind you, that is not of being plugged in that hopefully that's just of actual heating right so it shouldn't be heating all the time so you should get you know two three five years out of this heater before it's recommended to replace it and it is only 14 dollars and you know that makes it a little bit disposable but if you get three to five years out of it in a warmer climate um if you again with the glass top that keeps the heat in um man you might have this thing for a long time but i just thought it was super cool that it has a remote control, it has a digital display, and it lets you know how long it's run. So we got all the gear running. I think now it's kind of one of the easiest parts. We're just gonna go grab that rock, plop it in here, and see how it looks. Cool, man, it's actually super satisfying to finally give this thing a, not necessarily a forever home, but at least put it in a place where this entire rock will be able to be appreciated. So you can see all the pallies and the rhodactus and uh, these things are gonna go from having been overlit to now being uh, given barely enough light to survive. I can't wait to get this in the tank. And here we go. Get that light a little bit more over it. See how that do. All right, change of plans. You know, that's the fun part about working with some of this budget gear is just discovering their limits. And uh, I think I definitely overestimated what this little 10 watt uh, nano LED light was capable of. It looked really good on paper, nice heat sink, but there's no primary lens on each of the LEDs. And it's just overall so weak that the overhead lights are by far producing more light than this thing. I think if we put the par meter under there, it would give me a reading of like five to 10 micromoles. So we're gonna have a, a change of plans and swap it out. Um, I'm not gonna be able to use this for this build, although it is a nice little night light, but at $25, um, you definitely get what you pay for. So I actually dug up something from the archives, from the very, very oldest thing. This is a PAR 38 Spotlight. This is one of my first ever, probably like number four LED light of any kind. This is the current USA. I must've got this in like 2008, 2009, and haven't had, I used it for a lot of years on some of my first Zero Reef style concepts, but for sure, this is going to work. We plugged it in, it works. It um, drew about 15 watts, might take a moment to turn on but because it has those directional lenses it's going to make for a very pretty display so let's go ahead and plug it in i think we're gonna have much better color right off the bat oh yeah that's that's way more like it that's way more like it. So, all right, so change of plans. I do think you can still get these for about $20, um, I mean, like generic ones. They have just two or three blues and then two or three whites, depending. Um, again, that's just a, a 15 watt light bulb and then one of these should be about $5, you know, for a little incandescent base. So we're still in that $25 price range and I don't break my $100 budget on this reef tank.
So, you know, one of the other things that I've kind of uh, been challenged by is trying to figure out which point a saltwater marine aquarium becomes a reef tank. You know, you could say that this is a little bit hyper minimalist, you know, just a rock with some zoanthids and shrooms already kind of pre-grown onto it. So I want to spice it up just a little bit. So I've got a couple things I pulled out from some other tank. We've got a uh, nice large uh, feather duster here and just a coral banded shrimp. So um, the feather duster part itself will add some you know movement with the water flow and then the coral banded shrimp will actually add some uh, you know some smarts and some life to it so I'm just gonna pour him in there and I'll place that feather duster somewhere where our first little introductions of dirt into the aquarium and it looks like we have a little uh, Asterina riding this feather duster so I'm gonna stick him right there there we go all right, so we're just gonna let this kind of sit and simmer for, you know, the middle afternoon or something, clean up the wires, trying to make it a little more presentable. And uh, we'll come back on the other side when this is a mostly completed one day little zero reef. So the little concept zero reef tank has been going for a few hours. I did end up adding just like the, a few spoonfuls of sand just because it was like kind of painfully comical to watch the uh, coral bedded shrimp just kind of slide along the bottom. I don't, you know, I want him to be able to be comfortable. So the feather duster is completely open. The coral banded shrimp looks awesome. The uh, the polyps and the shrooms are starting to open up. And, um, you know, it was kind of a surprise to see that, you know, cheap 10 watt LED light from Amazon not quite live up to what it looked like, but that's actually part of the discovery um, in this journey of building some of these smaller nano reef aquariums. Um, I know. I know that this tank is the uh, saltwater equivalent of a small beta setup. Um, and there's a lot more lights available on the market that will be able to make this a little bit more popping as far as like bringing out the colors of the purple deaths and the red and green uh, Rhodactus. But just to give you a breakdown, you know, my uh, budget of all things, um, this is very conservative, right? So I got $10 for the 10 gallon tank, $15 for the lid, because if you go out and try to buy these things, the lid is surprisingly more expensive than the tank. Uh, the filter was $17. Uh, the original light was $25, and I know that you can get this light for $25. So we saved our uh, budgeting there. Uh, the heater is $14. And that, again, is gonna be a somewhat um, optional, depending on your climate or where in your house you wanna keep this thing. Um, the switch, which I think is important for Put, you know, adding a timer function to this thing, that was $5. And then just to round it all off, you know, you're not gonna get these things at your local store. So I threw in $10 for shipping. So we're up to a total of $96. And I'm not including livestock because it's such a subjective thing on what you're gonna put in your tank. You know, you could put super high dollar fancy pair of gold coral banded shrimp, or you could get, you know, some ghost shrimp and you still technically have shrimp in the tank. But, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying how it looks and just, I know that over the next few days and weeks, um, all the polyps are gonna brighten up, the shrooms are gonna brighten up from being in a lower light environment with definitely some more nutrients because we used um, old water there. But yeah, I just wanna take one step into, you know, helping the message that it is not <laughs> necessarily a rich uh, man's hobby to get into saltwater marine aquariums, whether you have corals or fish or invertebrates. And uh, we'll definitely be tracking this tank a little bit more on some future installments. So one thing I would like to know from you guys in the comments right now is if you would like to see me build uh, um, I don't want to build a bigger tank than this too much. I want to stay in the 10 gallon or lower range, but if you want me to build a smaller tank 
or a tank about this size, but a little bit more fleshed out, a little bit more filled in, and maybe like a $200 budget. So let me know in the comments what you'd prefer to see um, on a future zero reefing, zero reef tank uh, installment. So, so I know that this tank is, you know, a little bit rudimentary. You're not gonna be able to stuff it full of all the things, all the marine life of your dreams, but I think it's a, a great template to use for starting out a basic reef tank, and then you can learn a little bit more about um, a little bit more a larger filter, a little bit more programmable light, and getting into some of the trickier organisms. But I think this is a very informative um, demonstration of what is possible with less than $100 for a fully blown saltwater reef aquarium. So really hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions about nano reefing or starting up a reef tank, this is the video to get those questions answered. Make sure to put them down in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, and share it with someone who might uh, get something out of this style of video. I really hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you guys in another video very soon. Later guys.